We've covered the core concepts of MVVM. We've added models, views, and view models. We've also covered commands, which kind of fit into the view model layer, but in order to bring our application together, we're gonna to need some navigation so that we can navigate between our views. And navigation really fits into the broader concept of stores. So a store is something that manages our application state. It's our single source of truth. So navigation fits perfectly here because we want our navigation state to be centralized so that we know what view we should display and we can control what view we're on from anywhere in the application. Now we are gonna cover stores more in depth later in the series, because they're useful for other things such as asynchronously loading data and communicating between view models. But navigation will be a good place to start to demonstrate these concepts and we really need navigation right now. So we are gonna start off by creating a stores folder in our project and inside this folder, we're gonna create a class for our navigation store. And I feel like I've covered navigation so much on my channel. So I will be linking to the main series where I discuss navigation and some more advanced concepts there. But all our navigation store is going to do is store the current view model for our application. So we are going to have a property on here, which will be our view model base, which all view models inherit from. And this will be the current view model. Now I'm actually also going to create a backing field for this property. It's just a private current view model. And we need this backing field because we're going to do a little bit more inside of our setter, but our getter is going to be pretty straightforward. Just return the value of that field. But then in the setter, we are still going to set the current view model to the value that gets passed in to the setter. And then we'll come back here later and add something else. But anyways, this navigation store is gonna hold the current view model for the application. So that means we only want one navigation store in our application. We don't wanna instantiate this multiple times because then we wouldn't be sharing this current view model state throughout the application. So that means in the app.xaml.cs where we start the application, we are going to have our navigation store in here. So right at the root of our application, we can instantiate that in the constructor of our app. And now this will be our single navigation store for the application. And we can pass that down throughout our application via the main view model. And in fact, our main view model actually needs the navigation store so that we know what view to display on our main window. So what we're going to do is get that navigation store as a field in our main view model. So import the navigation store. And now to get the current view model for the application, we're just going to get that from our navigation store, which has a property for the current view model. So rather than storing the current view model state on our main view model, we have it in this third party kind of mediator like object, which will allow us to change the current view model for the application from pretty much anywhere as we're about to see in a little bit. But now let's get the navigation store through the constructor. Let's just generate a new constructor and get rid of this old one. We don't need that anymore. And now in our app.xaml.cs, let's pass in the navigation store and back in the main view model. So the current view model is from the navigation store, but by default, that current view model is null. So on our application startup, we will set the current view model. I think I want this to be the reservation listing view model. So let's instantiate that there. And now actually, if we start this, we are gonna see we're still in the make reservation view. And that is because in the main window, we hard code the make reservation view as what we display in the main window. But we want our view to be determined by whatever the current view model value is. So ultimately, we wanna map our view models to views. And the way to do that is with data templates. So on our root grid in our main window, we can have some grid resources and we can define data templates and our data type is gonna be our view model. So let's get our view models namespace in here. Well, let's call that VMs and that'll point to the view models namespace. And I wanna map my make reservation view model so we can do an X type and get the make reservation view model from our VMs namespace. I wanna map that to a make reservation view. And we actually don't have to define any data context here. That's automatically gonna get set to this make reservation view model that we're mapping from. And then we want another data template, this time mapping the reservation listing view model to a reservation listing view. And now that we have those mappings, we can now use a content control and set the content of our content control to the current view model. And that current view model in our case, is either gonna be a make reservation view model or a reservation listing view model. So when that content is set, it's gonna be like, oh, there's a data template for that. So the content control will display the corresponding view. And now if we run this, we should see our reservation listing view, which we do indeed. So now I wanna click make reservation and go to the make reservation page. 
And to do that, what we are gonna have to do is change the current view model in our navigation store. So that means our navigate command, which is what the make reservation button is binding to, that's gonna need our navigation store in here so that we can ultimately change the current view model. So we can get that through the constructor. And for now, we're just gonna hard code the new view model that we want. So we're gonna set the current view model to a make reservation view model. And that actually needs a hotel. For now, we're just gonna hard code a hotel in here and give it an empty name. And now lastly, in the reservation listing view model, we need to pass a navigation store to our navigate command in here. So we can get that through the constructor. So add a parameter for that. And then we instantiate this in our app.xaml.cs and we conveniently have our navigation store here. So now we should be able to click that button. So make reservation, there we go. We hit our breakpoint in the navigate command. So we are gonna set the current view model to a new value and we did not change the view. So the reason for that is because the main view model is getting the current view model from the navigation store, but this current view model changed and we did not raise an on property changed for this current view model property. So the view didn't re-grab the value of this property and update the view. So our navigation store is gonna to have to notify the main view model when the current view model changes. And the easiest way to do that is with an event. So we can define an event on our navigation store. It can just be an action. So subscribing with a method that has no parameters and returns a void. And we'll call this current view model changed. And when the current view model does change, we'll create a method called on current view model changed, which will just give us a clean way to invoke this event. So we can take our event and invoke it. So we are gonna be raising this current view model changed event. So in our main view model, we want to subscribe to that event. So let's create a method to handle that. We'll call it on current view model changed. And when the current view model changes, we want to call on property changed so that our UI will re-grab the value of the current view model and update our view. So let's try this again. Click make reservation and there we go, view updated. Hooray. So the next thing I want to tackle is when I'm on this make reservation view, when I click cancel, I want to go back to the reservation listing view. So last time we did create this cancel make reservation command, which we would execute whenever we click that cancel button. But what I'm thinking instead is that we're just going to reuse the navigate command to do the navigation. So we're going to remove this cancel make reservation command and just use our navigate command. Originally, what I was thinking was the cancel make reservation command would do something a little bit more than navigation by like displaying some kind of message. But I think I want to keep it simple and just do regular old navigation. So we will update that in the make reservation view model. We will just use a navigate command, which takes a navigation store and we'll get that as a parameter to our make reservation view model. But now the issue we have is that the navigate command just takes us to the make reservation view model every single time. And that's not what we want. This time we wanted to take us back to the reservation listing view model. So what we're gonna do is move this view model instantiation into a function, and then we'll take that function as a parameter to this navigate command, and then we'll just execute that function to get the view model that we want to set as the current view model. So this will be a func that returns a view model base. So it can be any view model and we'll call this create view model and we'll put that into a field. And then instead of instantiating the view model right here, we'll just call our create view model method, which is going to give us back our view model. So now our make reservation view model needs that create view model. So we're going to get that through the constructor as well, and then just pass that into the navigate command. And then we're going to do the same exact thing in the reservation listing view model. So let's just paste that create view model in there and pass that in to the navigate command as well. And actually I want this to create a make reservation view model. So let's change that and require this return type to be a make reservation view model. And then same kind of thing in the make reservation view model. I want this to be a reservation listing view model and we'll rename the parameter as well. And then all of this bubbles up into the app.xaml.cs. So we need to pass in a function to create a make reservation view model. So we can just define that function right here. So giving back a make reservation view model, we'll call it create make reservation view model. And all we're gonna do in here is instantiate a make reservation view model that needs a hotel. We got our hotel right here in the app.xaml.cs. It needs our navigation store. We got that as well. And then it needs a function to create a reservation view model. So we're gonna put that into a function. So create reservation view model and generate that method. And in here, instantiate the reservation listing view model, which takes a navigation store 
and a function to create a make reservation view model. Well, we got that right here. So we can just pass that in. And in fact, we now have this function to create a reservation view model. So we can just use that up here where we set the initial view model for the application. So now go to the make reservation page. There we go. Let's cancel and back on view reservations. So one thing to note is that we are instantiating a new view model each time. So click make reservation, we get a new view model, and then go back to the reservation listing view, new view model as well. So I believe the last navigation we need to do is on this submit button. So let's throw some data in here and submit. And what I would want this to do is take me to the reservation listing view. So let's head into the make reservation command. So that's where the submission goes. And right when we're done making the reservation, we want to renavigate. So what we could do is similar to the navigate command, we could get a navigation store in here and then a create view model delegate and then do the same exact thing. But then we kind of be duplicating all of this and all of the current view model setting. So what I'm going to do is create a service that'll take care of all of this navigation for me. And I'm going to create a new folder over here for services. I want to go more in depth with services in another video but I feel like this really fits into navigation right now. So this is gonna be a navigation service and it'll just have a simple method to navigate and all navigate is gonna do is the same thing we're currently doing in the navigate command. So we can cut this out and paste that in here and then it needs a navigation store and a create view model funk. So let's just copy this entire constructor in our navigate command and paste that into the navigation service, import everything we need and change this constructor name for the navigation service so now we've encapsulated all of this logic into our navigation service. And now in our navigate command, we can just take a navigation service. So make sure you import the one from reservroom.services, not the one from system.windows and get that through the constructor. And now to navigate, all we have to do is take our navigation service and navigate. And that's gonna do the same exact thing it was before, except our navigation service is doing it. And the benefit of that is that now in the make reservation command, all we need here is a navigation service. So we'll get that through the constructor. And actually I'm going to call this the reservation view navigation service, because that is ultimately where I want to navigate to put that into a field. And now when we make the reservation, We'll take our navigation service and navigate. So now we did change a bunch of constructors. For example, the navigate command now takes a navigation service and the make reservation command takes a navigation service as well. So we're going to have to update all of these constructors. So our make reservation command now needs a reservation view navigation service, which we'll get through the constructor. So generate a parameter for that. And now the navigate command needs a navigation service as well. And that's actually going to be the reservation view navigation service as well. So I want my submit button and my cancel button to both take me back to the reservation view. So I'll just use the same navigation service. And now we no longer need our navigation store. We no longer need our view model funk and our constructor is much simpler. And now same thing in the reservation listing view model, our navigate command needs a navigation service. And this will be a navigation service that takes us to the make reservation view. So we'll call this the make reservation navigation service, get that through the constructor, get rid of these old parameters that we don't need. And now we're finally bubbling up to the app.xaml.cs. So now we have to pass in a navigation service here. So let's instantiate that. And we have to pass in our navigation store and in this case, the create reservation view model, and then same kind of thing for our reservation listing view model, passing in the navigation service. So now go to make reservation, I can cancel. So navigation still works, but if I make a reservation and submit that, we navigate back to the view reservation, but you may have noticed my reservation is not on here. So that being said, our reservation listing view model We'll take the hotel as a parameter. So let's pass that through, add a parameter for that. And let's get rid of these hard coded reservations. We can create a method called update reservations. And first what we'll do is clear any existing reservations, which by default, there should be none because the only time we call this method is in our constructor when our collection has just been initialized, but let's clear. And then we're going to iterate over all the reservations in our hotel. So I think what I want to do is put my hotel into a field. So get the hotel reservations. I have this get all reservations method. And now we'll simply map each reservation to a reservation view model. So instantiate that pass in the reservation. And we'll add that view model to our observable collection of reservations. So there we go. We got no reservations. Maybe we would want to display something on here like 
no reservations have been made rather than just showing this empty grid but we can handle that later let's create a reservation so submit that and there we go there's our reservation so the reason we don't have to raise an event or anything on our hotel is because we instantiate a new reservation listing view model every time we go to the reservation listing page so we will be updating the reservations by default but anyways we have our models views view models we have commands we've implemented navigation to bring our application together we still need to go deeper into stores i want to look into services for asynchronously loading data and maybe go into some other things like styling and error handling but we do have a functioning application right now so hopefully you can apply these concepts to your own wpf mvvm application if you have any questions criticisms or concerns be sure to leave them below in the comments section if you're enjoying the channel or enjoy the video consider becoming a member other than that leave a like or subscribe for more thank you